So Linux is the most amazing desktop operating system on the planet, bar none. It's also the most painful and frustrating desktop operating system on the planet, bar none. You know, when things are working right, it's amazing. When things are not working right, you know, you'll pull out your hair. Of course, I've got hair, right? Uh, because DT is not bald. But, you know, one of the things that I've encountered recently is I've had some serious audio issues here on Linux. So I've been running the same installation of Arch Linux on this workstation at my office for about two, maybe three years. So, uh, you know, it's almost time to reinstall because I install a lot of stuff. You know, I get a lot of cruft hanging out on the file system. So I've been thinking about reinstalling anyway. But a couple of weeks ago, I noticed I got these weird issues. Anytime I record a video using OBS, which I always use OBS to record my videos, I was having weird audio issues, a lot of dropped audio frames, and I couldn't figure out what the problem was. You know, all of a sudden, the problem just crept into my recordings and you know I didn't change any hardware right of course Arch Linux is constantly updating software so I was assuming it's a software issue probably something related to either OBS or the underlying audio server pipe wire right but I could not figure out the issue so you know I didn't spend a lot of time trying to figure out the issue I figured you know what it's time to reinstall let's just go ahead and reinstall if I'm going to reinstall let's go with a different Linux distro just in case it's Arch specific, you know, let's go to a different Arch based distro. So I decided to move to Cache OS. Why Cache OS? It's very popular these days. A lot of people are running it. A lot of people seem to like it. It gets a lot of positive press and I haven't really lived on Cache OS. You know, I've tried it out in virtual machines, but it's not a distribution I've ever installed on other people's equipment. I've never actually installed it on my own personal equipment. So I installed Cache OS here on my workstation here at uh, my office. I, I installed Cache OS with the Qtile window manager and I've got it up and running and it's all very nice except there's one problem. And when I go to record in OBS, when I first installed it and went to record in OBS, guess what? I still had audio issues, those exact same audio issues I had on the previous Arch Linux install. So you can imagine how frustrating that is to reinstall an operating system because it takes a little time. Now the install itself only takes about 10 minutes, right? Installing Linux these days is a very easy process, but I've got to back up a lot of files. I've got to transfer the backups back onto the machine. I've got to clone a lot of my GitLab repositories to get all my configs. You know, it takes a little time to set everything up. And, you know, I spent a few hours doing that and boom, the same issues here as on Arch. Now you're thinking, well, Cache OS is Arch based, so it makes sense why you ran into the same issues. So I was like, well, you know what? I'm still glad I, I hopped. I needed a fresh install anyway. At least I can rule out, you know, like weird like config file issues because I'm starting with like everything default out of the box on Cache OS. So I've spent the last four days trying to solve these audio issues, trying to troubleshoot them, doing a lot of research, asking ChatGBT and Gemini a lot of questions, dozens and dozens of questions. I spent four days trying to fix this problem. I think I figured it out uh, this morning. But, you know, four days ago, I was trying to fix it on the old Arch installation. Then I gave up installed Cache in the last three days on the new Cache OS installation. I've been trying to fix this problem. And at first, you know, I assumed it was a pipe wire problem. So I was asking Jim and I about, you know, pipe wire on Arch Linux and what could be my issues with dropped audio frames. And, you know, Jim and I was nice enough to suggest like dozens and dozens of things. Right? And I tried them all because none of them worked. Uh, the first thing they asked me to do was to delete uh, the local state pipe wire folder. So if I open my file manager here and let's go into home directory dot local state, you might have a pipe wire folder here or if you got a wire plumber uh, folder here as well, you know, just delete that folder because it contains like some configuration stuff delete that and then you know restart the pipe wire server and you know maybe uh, you you will actually solve the problem maybe it's some old settings because especially on the arch linux installation is when i tried that you know I, I, there's new updates you know uh, at some point pulse audio became pipe wire and then you had like pipe wire dash pulse you know installed on the system so just getting rid of all of that old you know, uh, config stuff, local stuff, get rid of all those files, reset everything back to default settings, and maybe 
That'll fix your problems. That didn't work. And then Jim and I told me, well, you know, it's probably your audio equipment, right? Because the microphone here is plugged into a USB audio mixer back there on the server rack. So maybe it's something with USB devices. Maybe you try disabling auto suspend on your USB devices using UDEV rules. You know, it's a complicated kind of uh, topic that I've never really gotten into before. So it was a learning experience, but I disabled auto suspend on these USB devices on both the USB mixing board, also on the USB uh, Elgato cam link that I used to capture my video on the camera and you and disabled auto suspend on pretty much everything and guess what that didn't solve any of my audio issues when recording in OBS and then Jim and I asked me just to create my own pipe wire config and try various settings so if I open a terminal here you know it had me create this config here in dot config slash pipe wire slash pipe wire dot com basically you copy over the default pipe wire config and it had me change some settings you know things that could be uh, a little bit uh, too aggressive as far as settings for pipe wire that could be causing me issues in OBS and the settings that I tried here based on the Gemini recommendations well none of that worked either then I decided you know it's got to be something with OBS right it's got to be an OBS specific problem let me launch a second instance of OBS and the reason this is a second instance is because I am already using one instance of OBS to record this video but in OBS I go into settings here and you've got a million different settings you could play around with with both audio and video but in audio you know you've got a lot of things to play with in video you got some things to play with and then in output you've got streaming and recording and recording especially this is what I really focused on you know what formats I tried different recording formats because you got a million different things you could output to I also experimented with software encoding versus hardware encoding. I typically use software encoding, but I tried hardware encoding. The same problems no matter the encoder. It also didn't matter the audio encoder as well. Whatever I tried, the same audio issues. I also tried different rate controls and uh, CRF levels as well. It didn't matter. The same uh, dropped audio frame issue sounded exactly the same. The problem was always the same, no matter what I tried. And then finally, I decided, you know, it could be some equipment problem, some hardware problem. And Jim and I was like, well, you know what? Maybe try plugging in some of these different devices to different USB ports. So I tried swapping around the USB ports that I've got the mixing board plugged into, as well as my Elgato CamLink camera, you know, because it could be overloading the USB ports, right? It's trying to draw too much power uh, for what is needed for OBS to record. And no matter what I did with USB swapping, that didn't fix the issue either. Then I thought, well, it could be an Elgato CamLink issue. And luckily I've got two Elgato CamLinks, right? I've got one on this camera. I have a second one because sometimes I record two cameras at the same time didn't matter swapping be between the two because I thought maybe the one I've been using maybe something's wrong with it maybe it's starting to fail well no I swapped it out for this one it's the same problem it's always the same problem the dropped audio frame issue and then you know it, it occurred to me I've been always trying to record in OBS it's like let me record just my audio because it's always an audio issue let me just record some test audio using a different program other than OBS to see if it's just an OBS issue. So I installed Audacity and I recorded about four minutes of a test recording in Audacity. No dropped audio frames and four minutes was long enough. I was pretty confident that had the issue persisted, I would have got those uh, dropped audio frames because it seemed to happen like every two to three minutes uh, on a somewhat regular basis like uh, you know if I recorded for three minutes I was always going to get some dropped audio issues as long as I was talking constantly you know obviously in dead air you might you know something might slip by but you know the audacity test recording was perfect I was like well what's going on what's the difference between recording just me audio only on my microphone in audacity and recording in OBS and you know I asked Gemini this question what's the difference and they're like well you're recording your camera it must be a camera problem so it's like well I've already tried swapping out different ports swapping out the cam link uh, it's like I, I, what else could be you know I was like well let me 
see if I can actually record my audio and my camera using a different program other than OBS. So I installed VocoScreen. VocoScreen, I think is a like a KDE application. No, it's a cute application that is a kind of like simple screen recorder. It can record your desktop, but it also has the, uh, the option to also uh, have a pop-up window that includes your camera, like my face when I'm recording in my camera. And I could put that on my desktop to also record it. And when I was just recording my camera and desktop and then the audio from the microphone and voco screen, everything sounded good. But when I added desktop audio to voco screen, the audio was like horrible. Like it was, you couldn't even listen to it. I was like, wow, that's weird. You know, I thought maybe it was a bug in voco screen. Then it occurred to me desktop audio when I enable it in voco screen, causing me issues. I record my desktop audio also in OBS. Maybe it's recording desktop audio. That's the problem. So I go into OBS. Let me relaunch a second instance of OBS. And if we go into settings and I go into audio, desktop audio, you can see as I'm recording this video is disabled. And that is what solves the problem. So I just needed to quit recording my desktop audio, which for a video like this, what I'm recording today, I don't need to record any desktop audio. I'm not playing any uh, audio. Typically, I'm not playing music or video. Typically, I don't ever want to record music or video on one of my videos because there's a chance, especially with music, the video could be flagged for copyright issues. So typically, I, I don't need desktop audio. The only time I need desktop audio is when I'm recording me like on a video conference, like on a Discord call or a Zoom call. That has to come through the desktop audio. and I've got to re-enable desktop audio to record that, and it's going to cause me some issues. But those are kind of rare kind of videos that I do. They're not the norm. So right now, I've at least diagnosed the problem, right? If you're one of these people all of a sudden here in the last week or two, maybe you're running into similar issues with recording in OBS, disabling the desktop audio seems to fix the problem because I'm recording this video, and, well, I'm not going to do any crazy audio editing. I'm going to leave it as is. If there's any kind of weird dropped audio frames or static or popping or anything, you guys will hear it. But my guess is uh, I'll annotate the video if there if, if anything comes up while I'm editing it. But for me, you know, I've already done some test recordings and it seems to be a fix for the problem. It's just, hey, don't record the desktop audio if you don't need it. So all that being said, did I really need to switch from Arch over to Cache EOS? Uh, well, not really. And most of the time when you run into problems on Linux, distro hopping is not really the solution. I mean, it, it's a solution, but you know, it really often doesn't fix the problem. And I kind of knew that, but it was time for me to reinstall anyway. So I'm happy. I'm on a clean file system. I've got very few packages installed. I've got the Qtile window manager. That's the only window manager on the system. So I don't have a ton of extra libraries and extra programming languages I'm not using right now. I'm, I don't have any snaps installed or flat packs installed. I'm using just native packaging. Now, as far as the OBS issue, I did try the native package of OBS and the flat pack of OBS testing the audio issue with the desktop. It's the same for both. So it's not a packaging issue, that particular bug. Now installing Cache EOS is very easy. It uses the Calamari's installer. I will say there is a little bit of a bug if you do like me and install the Qtile edition and that's all you install. By default, their Qtile edition here uses the LI login manager, LI or LI. That thing is buggy as hell. It's always been buggy as hell. That's why I've never shown it on camera, you know, when it first appeared on the scene. I know a lot of Linux creators made videos about it, but it's buggy and I didn't want people to actually try it out. I thought it, you know, people shouldn't test that thing out, right? And I don't know if it's even maintained anymore, but at least on Cache OS Qtile, that is the display manager, the login manager that they use out of the box. And when I tried to use that, you know, I, the install went fine, then I reboot the very first time and it wouldn't boot it, because it could never reach the login manager and you couldn't even drop to a TTY. So the installation is completely hosed because if you can't get to a TTY, your only hope is, well, put your USB stick back in, you know, chirrut back into the system. I didn't want to do all that because the installation only takes five, maybe 10 minutes at most. I put the USB stick back in and 
just rebooted back to the live environment and did a reinstall, except this time, because the Cache OS installer allows you to pick and choose certain programs, I made sure that I installed the Qtile desktop package, but I ticked off LY. I didn't want the LY display manager. And then I went, I think, into either KDE or LXQt for their desktops to install. I ticked off everything except SDDM. So I got the SDDM login manager installed with all the Qtile packages. And that's what I'm using here. And it's working lovely. Now, one of the things is when you get rid of an old installation and you install a new installation, right? You got to remember to make backups because there's some important things, at least for me, I had to make sure to carry over to this new installation or I was going to be in a lot of trouble. Now, I use the pass command and I, I've been a pass user for years. Pass is a command line password manager. It's where I store all my passwords for everything. And I got a million passwords, right? Every service that you sign up for, you need to use a unique password. So you use a password manager, right? So I've got all of my passwords stored. And so I needed to keep my password store folder, but all of those passwords, of course, are encrypted and you need a GPG key for that. So I had to make sure to carry my GPG keys, my password store with me as well. So I've got an external hard drive that I save all of that too. Also, I wanted to make sure had a lot of fonts on the system. I wanted to make sure that I copied user share fonts over to a backup drive because there was going to be some weird fonts that maybe I can't find again. I wanted to make sure I had all my fonts for various LibreOffice documents and things like that. And then I had some personal documents and stuff uh, as well. Uh, now, all of my config files as far as, you know, my bash config, my fish config, my Qtile config, all my Emacs configs, all of that stuff. Stuff. You know, I, I version control most of that, right? I've got GitLab repositories. So actually, if I go into this repository here, actually this folder, GitLab dash repos, these are all my repos over on GitLab. And this is simply, I just needed to do a Git clone. I Git clone all of these repos and voila, I've got all of my um, version controlled config files back on the system. So, you know, uh, this took a little time, but it wasn't that big a deal. It's one of those things. If I started, say, at nine o'clock in the morning, you know, by 12 noon, I would have been done. So there you have it. Some of my issues here in the last few days, some of my struggles with Linux. But, you know, I've decided to, at least for now, move away from Arch. I'm on Cache OS, by the way, right? So I'm a Cache OS user. And I'm looking forward to being a Cache user because they do some interesting things, right? Because they maintain a lot of their own packages. They maintain a lot of their own kernels. They do some optimizations. So, you know, I'm not one of those people that I typically deviate a lot from the norm, but I may play around with some of the interesting stuff that the Cache team is doing with their distribution. Anyway, ran over, guys. Peace.